Egypt has always been of uh, central importance to the Middle East and the region's stability. It has also been a strategic interest for the United States, our policy objectives in the region, and our national security. The Suez Canal remains an all-important waterway that serves as a strategic asset for the global trade, but just as importantly, the avenue which U.S. warships can easily traverse to go between the Mediterranean and the Persian Gulf. Over the past four years, we have certainly seen Egypt un undergo drastic changes. As policymakers, we face one of the more difficult challenges in Egypt, and today's hearing is entitled Egypt Two Years After Morsi to examine the ever-changing dynamics on the ground of that country. Since the 2011 revolution, the change we had hoped to see for Egypt has been slow to come, to say the least. For many of us, myself included, we believe that human rights is a top priority that must be taken into account as we formulate our foreign policy objective. We want to see people living in free, democratic, and open societies where everyone can practice without fear their religion and where everyone is treated equally and fairly. In March of this year, an Egyptian court ruled that parliamentary elections had to be postponed, making, marking a major setback in Egypt's path to democracy. The authorities in Egypt and different branches of government must work together to ensure that the elections are scheduled as quickly as possible and in accordance with Egyptian law. It's important to note that elections for the sake of elections are not the only requirement for a democracy. <coughs> a government must also govern democratically and respect the rights of its citizens. But we also understand that there can be no economic prosperity, no political stability without safety and security. And right now, Egypt faces threats from the Sinai and along its borders with, with Libya. And Cairo plays an important role as a counterbalance to the Iranian regime's hegemonic ambitions in the region. Egypt has taken a very active role in the Sinai, which for years has been ignored by Cairo and is confronting the radical terror groups, some affiliated to ISIL. Egypt has long been a vital uh, Egypt has also been vital in cutting off and destroying the tunnels in Gaza used by Hamas and has been working closely with Israel to combat their shared threats. Earlier this year, the administration decided to resume weapons transfer to Egypt to help Cairo counter some of these threats. In 2013, Mr. Connolly and I commissioned a three-phase report from the Government Accountability Office to assess our foreign assistance to Egypt. The GAO is currently conducting this third phase, which will assess the security-related assistance, and the timing could not be more important as we resume these weapon sales. It is in our national security interest to see that these terror threats are eliminated and that Egypt remains a strategic ally and continues to have a good working relationship with Israel. Recently, Egypt has taken moves that signal that it is willing to move away from the U.S. toward a closer relationship with Russia. Russia has agreed to build a nuclear power plant in Egypt, and the two have increased trade dramatically over the past year, and Putin has vowed to increase Russian weapons sales to Egypt. We cannot afford to allow Putin to undermine our ties with Egypt. It would be a serious blow to our national security interests. But as friends, it is also important that we take issue with Cairo's lack of progress on the domestic front. I still remain deeply concerned over the fate of 43 NGO workers, many of whom are American citizens who were convicted in absentia in a sham, politically motivated trial. It would be a simple but important gesture for CC to pardon these individuals and signal that he is willing to move Egypt forward in a positive direction and could improve the U.S.-Egypt bilateral relationship. We should also look to re-examine the controversial laws against civil society, like the NGO law and the protest law. As much as the Egyptian people appreciate safety, security, and economic growth after the recent instability, they are also seeking far-reaching changes to the political process and the people's relationship with the state. President Sisi should seize this opportunity to move forward on long-needed democratic reforms and the U.S. can play an important role in that effort. What it boils down to is finding the right balance between security and democracy, and the United States must ensure 
that we leverage our assistance to promote both simultaneously. With that, I'm pleased to yield to the ranking member of our subcommittee, Mr. Deutsch.